Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin amma ba'd We are on another episode of Abu Sumayr's Corner On this episode inshallah ta'ala we have with us Sheikh Ali Abdul Karim And we're talking about the need for security and safety in the Muslim community And this I believe is, is, is a very important topic A very important dialogue that we need to have um, After the tragic event in New Zealand yeah. um, For many who saw the video um, We saw You know How awful It was that this individual Walked into the masjid um, Slaughtered 41 people um, in that, in, in the process of doing that, as he walked into the masjid, um, you know, he shoots the first two people in the in, in the in the very beginning entrance at the masjid. He turns right, shoots the brother that's in, in in the little room. He continues down the hall, and when he gets to the end of the hall, he opens up into the main musalla area, where when he turned right, basically everybody was laying in the corner, right. and he just began to fire off until he ran out, went back out into the hallway to get more ammo, came back in again. I don't know if that was the first time or the second time when he, the guy tried to run out and then he shot the guy trying to run out as right. well. And then he kind of just turned left. Everybody was laying on the corner and left and shot everybody out on the, that was on the left corner. Went back out to the car, changed guns, came back into the facility again. And then basically at this time kind of like walked up to everybody and just kind of waited to see who moved, who shook and then just began to put, you know, do straight murder shots, you know, back of the head type shots to make sure that he actually finished the victims off and right. nobody actually survives. Um, and going through this in the Muslim community, me as an imam, anyway, Sheikh Ali, me as an, no. an imam, and, 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 and Sheikh Ali, for those who may not know Sheikh Ali, many may have seen him as he's the head of security over at Masjid Taqwa, where Imam Siraj Wahaj is at, Alhamdulillah, um, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Allah, yeah, bless and preserve uh, Imam Siraj and all of the brothers who help protect uh, the brothers there at the Masjid and the Imam. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys come from a very different scenario, yeah. right? Um, than what most Muslim communities, um, or the reality of most Muslim communities. Um, I'll give you, for instance, my Masjid, um, I believe that you know, we're an easy, soft target, mm. right? We were talk, you talked to me before about mm. hard targets and soft right. targets, which I'll let you explain, inshallah ta'ala, but we're an easy, soft target, even though we have every Juma uh, armed police officer at the front of the masjid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody comes in with big coats in the winter time. you know what I'm saying? The cop doesn't search anybody who comes into the facility. He looks at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not sure if he has skills to tell him. <laughs> you know I mean? no, no. He's almost suspicious or not. Mm. But once you're in the Musalla area and you sat down, by the time he makes it up from hearing gunshots, only Allah knows best what yeah. can happen. Um and I and, and I state that they're a special case because Alhamdulillah, we know that Alhamdulillah, the African American community j just in general or specifically. Um and then Imam Siraj's community, Alhamdulillah that you guys are very security conscious, yeah. alhamdulillah. Um, I remember um, last week, three weeks ago, a brother Ash actually asked me regarding Masjid, he, he sent me a message about Masjid al mm. And he said, Imam, he said, how was Masjid al able to clean out that area mm. of drugs and prostitution and the likes? And it was during a time when there was not much Islamic information. Right. During a time where you know the brothers didn't have much things to you know help them increase in their in their faith, they had the basics. Um, he said, and now we're so large, and we <coughs> can't even accomplish that. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, but mashallah, the brothers there no. was able to do it, and I told them quality over quantity. Subhanallah. You know what I mean, no. so Sheikh, man, you know, talk to us a little bit about the importance of what you <coughs> see as a specialist. No. Alhamdulillah, that you know you train brothers, um, martial arts. Mm. Um, weapons training, the whole nine yards, inshallah yeah. ta'ala, so that the Muslims can learn how to defend themselves, alhamdulillah, and you're registered. You know, tell us a little bit about yeah. yourself and, yeah. and, 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 you know, how can we begin to move forward towards, and the importance of moving forward yeah. towards protecting the Muslim community and our families. Awudu billahi min shaitan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim alhamdulillah, salatu salam, rasulullahi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam. 
I'm a bad. Inshallah, um, just like to you know convey my my token of gratitude for you having me here, Shit, you know, so we can explain uh, uh, the situation. You know, um, my back my my background is I'm into security. I'm a license. I'm a licensed investigator, private investigator, along with being involved in in, in security uh, by New York State. Uh, I've been into sec I've been into security uh, business for. Oh, uh, just about over 40 years now. Um, I'm also, a, you know, I'm an instructor in martial arts. Uh, my particular system is ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is comprised of all different types of fighting forms. You know, it's a strictly a fighting art. It's not a boxing art. Uh, nin, you know, they, you, you speak about ninjutsu, you speak about uh, people might be familiar with ninjas, you know, the, the type of, uh, uh, in the seventh century, you had ninjas doing that particular time. They're like, they they would be Chinese considered stars, all like that, that yeah, have stars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they would be they would be equivalent to what we con what we consider being special forces today, right? And, um, and 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 because of that, you know, basically it's it's dealing with the art of war, right? More than than boxing, but we modified because every situation is not as extreme as being on the battlefield, but fighting is in whatever form, whatever degree your fighting is you still have to develop strategy and, and be tactful and so forth, right? Um, also in, in, into weaponry, you know, all types of different weapons and modern weapons and, and what we call improvised weaponry and so forth, you know? Improvised weaponry would be something like uh, using a pen. You know, that, it's not classified as a weapon, but like it, this pen here could be used as a weapon, although it's not defined as one, right? So we, it, and we have, a variety of uh, uh, techniques and styles that deals with the kind now, of. Now, what can you do with a pen? Just for well, <laughs> well, here I can I can use it as a jabbing instrument. You know, hitting. You know, base, basically with a pen, you would hit soft tissues, eyes. You know, back of here, necks. You know, throat. Those kind of things. Even even the, like you know, using um, the pen to to inflict pain on, based on nervous systems, you know, vital points and things of that nature, you know, so it's, it, you know, they say the pen is mightier than the sword, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, so that's the thing, and, um, you know, uh, we use, we use these techniques, you know, you, 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 um, you briefly spoke about us cleaning up the drugs in, in, uh, in New York, in Brooklyn, in Bed-Stuy, uh, where, the, where the masjid is presently at, on Bedford and Fulton. And um, that that was an operation within itself, and we were very, and we had to, we had to become very strategic, and we had and we were uh, we were tacticians dealing with uh, uh, preventive measures, security, and and also the, we used tactics, we used war type tactics, we used tactful tactical tactics that you would normally see SWAT, law enforcement, and military use. We were trained by a special forces uh, 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 sergeant in, in the military army, in the army. Uh, I, what happened was I used to, I was invited, I w along with a, my, one of my co-student, co I was invited to train, you know, he had basically met this uh, special forces individual and he, and he knew about our art and I was invited by one of, one of my co-students to um, help train the special forces. And in doing that, we were trained. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, uh, be because of the nature of what we were gonna deal with, the intensity of the type of situation we were gonna deal with in respect to dealing with the drugs back then in the, in the 80s where drugs, you know, the proliferation of drugs was at its highest as we, as we know, especially in New York and especially in Brooklyn and Harlem and in the Bronx. So uh, what happens? Well, we we understood what we were dealing with, and we, and the and what we might encounter, and and back then you had what they call the the Jamaican posse, and these were these were like the uh, pit bulls of the you know these these were the That's with, my weed <laughs> the, 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 you know what I'm talking about, yeah, go <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Man. They were the arm um, they were the arm um, element of of the drug cartel, mm -hmm. like cartel as we would say you know right back then right um and also you had the supreme team and the a team and these these were these were people that will wipe you out without a moment's notice so we knew what we were up against when we when we start 
the, uh, we decided to embark on cleaning up the drugs in our area. In the beginning, we were coexisting with the drug and the crime. And the crime. We were existing with the drug activities and mm -hmm. crime. We established the masjid in, in 1981. And, um, you know, we would, you know, we would go to and fro. We had families coming in. I mean, you couldn't get out of your car. Before you can even get out of your car, somebody was coming up to you trying to solicit drugs to you. Right. It was that kind of thing. What happened was we had uh, one of the brothers, uh, one of the brothers had a restaurant right near the masjid. And, and there was a shootout. And within that shootout, the bullet ricocheted with the, in, in the restaurant, you know, with the, through the glass window in the restaurant. At that point, we decided we can no longer coexist with this kind of situation. Mm. So we sat down, we met with the imam, and the imam spoke to us, and we, you know, we started strategizing. We need, you know, we need to take a stand. We need to confront this situation. We can no longer exist, coexist with this, this type of activities. We've got families coming to and fro, women and children. And uh, that situation that was a sign for us. It told us right away. You know, that was, the, that was the exact signal that we needed to know that, you know, it, it could be even more serious than that. It could be a catastrophe, which, alhamdulillah, it wasn't. But it was a sign that it can go even, you know, further. It can escalate to that yeah. point. So what, what, you know, so the man, uh, in, in his spiritual leadership, he, he, he looked, he, we were strategizing. So he took, the, he took the, the ayat out of the Quran about Noah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleansed the earth, mm. right? 40 days, 40 nights. Mm. So we took, that, we took that number, 40, that we, would, that, that we would take a 40 day campaign of cleaning up the drugs, right? Okay. And, uh, and what we did was, and we strategized. We 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 took it to a level where uh, where we used we we used the method of not putting people on notice, putting the drug dealers on notice. So we had a rally with a stage. We we constructed a, a platform stage right in front of the masjid, and we invited politicians and in, in the police department and you know and and uh, black Af uh, advocates you know to come and you know join us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we had a stage with the mic and all that and. What we did was we put the drug dealers on notice that we will no longer tolerate the existence of crime and drug activities in our neighborhood and that we, will, we, we, are, <clears throat> we are on the verge of shutting down the crack houses mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the drug dens, right? Because we had a, a, a long, along the line of, um, of the masjid on Bedford Ave, on Fulton Street, there was a, 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 a barrage of, um, of abandoned buildings. And within those bounding buildings, that's where the drug activities was coming out. And they were very, they were, they were very strategic. They would, you know, you would walk up, the person would walk up, state his, you know, his business, and the, and he, you would never see the 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 um, the drug dealer. You know, he had some kind of like petition, and he would put it up, give the person the drugs, and and, the, and then you know to go about their business. So what we did, what we did was we, because. Even the police department said that they, because they, they tried their best to stop the drugs mm -hmm. and, and they were unsuccessful. And they didn't think what, that we were going to be unsuccessful. They were saying that really it's impossible, you know. And, you know, we were not as a, equipped. As they are. Uh, you understand? But we were equipped with the spirit. The spirit and we were equipped with, you know, trusting in the law and all the, all the good things that come from Islam, all the motivation that comes from Islam. You know, the brothers were ready, whether we were armed or not. They were ready spiritually to, to, to confront this, 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 this uh, um, vice, you know. And um, what happened was we met with the police department. We said, look, we're going to do this anyway. We, so our strategy with them and our agreement with them is say, look, you closed, you, you know, because they knew, they knew where the drug dens were and, and uh in the um, where they were conducting transactions at in the abandoned buildings, so we told we agree we, we we this is this is the offer that we gave them. We said, look, you close the you close the, close it down, and we'll keep it closed. So we agreed upon that. So that's what they did. They raided, they raided the place, closed sweeped, closed it down, and then what we did we stood in front. We had manpower to stand in front of the buildings. Mm. It's like we developed strategy of a wedge we are uh, the wedge between the, the 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 person that was the consumer 
of the drugs and the and and the sellup, mm. you know, mm. and and uh, and every time somebody would come up, said no, business is closed, you know, it's it's not here, and we did that f at, for forty days, mm. and we and and we dried it up way before forty days came, you know, uh, uh, came into um, into fruition, you know, we 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 stood there rain sleet or snow brother mm. there was brothers out there when it was snowing raining we was we were out there we would make make sure everybody was on point in the beginning we had we had brothers coming from all over the country different states coming over pennsylvania new jersey coming and and, and quite naturally all over the borough mm. and um and you know and and you know as as things do happen it's the manpower started to started to dwindle, but it didn't dwindle to the point in where we were not effective by Las Pantanas. And from there, we stopped after after forty days. It was that was it, and we kept it that way. You know, matter of fact, <laughs> we even painted the we in, the, in front of the master. We painted the paint the sidewalk green. They say this is a no crime zone, <laughs> no drug. <laughs> you know, I mean, we were into it now. In, ter in terms of the, the, the um, say, the courage of the brothers, the, the motivation, the enthusiasm, the morale, I, like I said, I had introduced uh, my brothers that were on security and that was in, in participating in this with, to a training, a specialized training program. We were in Fort Dix. Fort Dix we were training, we, we had access to it because of this individual that was training us. And I was training them in the martial arts, but the tactical stuff we were in, you know, shooting and, and doing maneuvers. You know, we, we, matter of fact, we were doing, we had it set up where there was a, 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 a simulated Vietnam village, you know, and we were, I mean, we were, we were doing our thing, man, especially in terms of hardcore training. We were training just like the Special Forces, we were training just like SWAT, or whatever the case is, and it was all about, it was all yeah. about. <laughs> the government, the training hey, this ain't the, no Al-Qaeda training. No, no. <laughs> it was all legit. That's right, all legit, and it was for good cause. Even, even, even when you know, uh, in in the courts, they realized that when you know, like, because I'm an, I'm a private investigator, and I was on the World Trade Center cases and the Sheikh uh, Umar Sheikh Abdurrahman and the brothers, you know, in the uh, um, bombing case and so forth, and and they try to say that we were training, you know, for you know to come against the country. I mean, they were trying to get everybody, but it came out in the court mm. that we were training to to fight the drugs. So that was clear, and that's what we're doing. That's and that's all we do. And in, in, in other words, we're productive. We you know we're connected. We're licensed. We 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 we're not fanatics. We we to this very day, there's you know statistically there's zero crime in front of, in, in in our area in front of uh, Master Tucker from from Fulton uh, from uh, Bedford and Fulton all the way on Franklin to Nostrand Avenue, right? And 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 the and the evidence of that is that when after we cleaned up the drugs because no business wanted to conduct any kind of business or do any kind of business in that area because of the drugs now if you go there it's it's a whole commercial venture there yeah. you know with all types of stores and re we got restaurants you know, even uh, people outside that came they built their stores there they, you know they got all types of foot lockers and and jimmy jazz <laughs> you know t-mobile I mean, you, you, this is a total commercial area, right? But back then, no, nobody wanted to take the chance, right? So alhamdulillah, so, so I say that to give you that background is to, is to really try to impress and impact upon the ummah that when you, make, when you make the right choices and you have the right mindset and you're on the, on, on, you're on the right uh, say the right cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid you. Because we cleaned up that area. I, like I said, we wasn't, you know, I mean, we, we, we were strategic. We, were, we had licensed people. Mm -hmm. And we, we had our stuff set up. You know, like, you know, like we, we, we were strategically set up to the point we already knew that if certain situations happened, we had certain measures to confront any, any situation or any scenario that, that, that we deem necessary that might occur. And that's and that's our mindset, right? And and to this very day, right? 
So getting to this situation where we're dealing with you know this 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 individual man that uh, uh, committed terrorism and, and assault on on the masjid and uh, the carnage that he had created and and the massacre that that that, that he did uh, upon our our brothers and sisters during that time. First of all, you have to understand the mentality of that kind of person. One, the mentality that he's a cold, calculated killer. Mm. But he's a, he, he's a trained, calculated killer. He's not a craze. Like the, you know, I, I, I always get upset when they say he's a madman. No, he's not a madman like that. He's not an unreasonable. He, got, he, got, he has his faculties complete. And he's trained. What he did, he, what he did, what, what any special forces person would do if he was put on an assignment to go and assault a certain area. According to his manifesto, he said he was military trained. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. So, so and, and before I read the manifesto, I already knew because I watched it. You know, people say, oh, I can't watch it. And I understand that. You know, I understand. I showed my security, sisters and brothers. I showed them why. I sh and I told the imam, the imam, you know, he, he was like, I, well, I wouldn't have showed. I said, I said imam, I said... Uh, I took, uh, you know, because let me let me say this much, uh, uh, Imam. When 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 you and I, people like us, think we think from an Islamic perspective, right? If you know, when we look for answers about anything, we go to the Quran and we go to the source and the Sunnah, and we look and say, well, like how we, you know, uh, how should we move in this area? It's like a law, like we see signs in the law. Spontaneity he talks about a law sends signs so that you can read those signs, so that you can understand what's going on. So we have to read the signs. So I took ayats from the Quran and I, and, and, and I just put it together and say, you know, you know like uh, this, is, this is my source of consciousness now at this point. So what I told the imam, I said, imam, I said, this incident during the time of the message of Allah, for instance, the battle of Uhud, you know, where the Muslims disobeyed the message of Allah. Right, and and they may have they, they may have lost the battle, but they won a moral battle, a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. And it said that they felt, you know, how they felt afterwards, right? But we understand that after that situation, they never disobeyed the, the Prophet Sallallahu after that, and they won every battle that they fought. Yeah, it was a lesson that they had learned. That's what I'm saying. So I said the same thing with that. That's the, that I said that was my reason of showing, because sometimes. Sometimes, as 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 a, as a head of security, I come in and my men may not be doing. You know, they may may not be following the orders that they've been given, or enforcing policy, or they're not set up like they should be. And I come in and I have to say, you know, I have to. It's almost like, and it's not all the time, but you know, you have some people who sometimes they get slack, right? But I said after I show that film, I will should never have to talk to my people or tell them what they need to do. They will go right into the mall. I actually mall. heard another imam do the same thing from the Wolf Dane community. There you go. He said, he was, like, he was like, now you know when I tell you my security and I'm, and I'm, and I'm hard on you, now you know. Yeah Allah, yeah Allah. And that's it, that's it, man. And see, and that's why we got to be always thinking, right? And if we think on the level that the, the, the God-given aqil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the intellect and we use it and, and it's for purity, it's for his cause, he will guide us, Aki. Absolutely. He will guide us. And, that, and now when I come in, everything is set up. It's the same thing with my martial art class, right? Now, you know, children, they have a tendency of uh, the attentive span is not always, you know, uh, there and, and always intact and they're all over the place. My kids, well, I don't have to be there. You know, normally when, when the teacher's not there, everybody runs around. No, when I come, my, my kids, because of, their dis because of the discipline that they receive and the kind of culture environment that I have created alhamdulillah by Allah is that when I come to class no matter what time I come every, they have to put down the mats first thing they do they come they know their assignment they put the mats down if there's, if, if there's not an instructor there one of them get up and lead the class mm -hmm. that's the kind of discipline we want mm -hmm. that's the kind of the regimentation that we need things can't break down because someone is not there that's what I'm saying and that's the situation here now now, when you look at this situation and, and, and you know, this manifests is, and everybody that can get a chance to read it as Muslims must read it. If you can look at the film, look at the film so that you can understand what you're dealing with. Right? And, and I, I don't mean to cut you off. Shay, no, no. I, I, think, I think that's one of, you know, you made a statement before mm. 
And when you start when you talking about Mr. Tukwa and about going into the drugs, and I think this statement was pertinent, where you said we knew what we were encountering. Subhanallah. Right? We knew what we were encountering. For me, looking at the video was knowing what I was encountering as an imam, as a leader in the community. Sahih. Um, you showing it to the team, you know what I mean? You preparing the people, This and this is what it's about, knowing what we're going to encounter and then how to protect ourselves when, when, when we encounter that situation, you know what I mean? Because I, may Allah bless the brothers and sisters who passed away. Amen, amen, amen. But I was upset on that day. Yeah. I, I had to give the as we all was. I, I had to give the khutbah on that day and I was upset. And I hadn't seen the video yet. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what how what, how things transpired. Right. But in my community, because we only got stairs, mm -hmm. and then you're right into our musalla, mm -hmm. and we may have another exit out another room, but it's a very small room. Mm -hmm. If a hundred we got six so you got six, seven hundred people during Juma. Mm -hmm. Everybody hit the door, you ain't gonna fit through the door. That's you right. Squeeze an elephant through the That's door. That's right. Right? I said, you know, one of the things that upset me was I said, where and again, this is not being disrespectful mm -hmm. to the deceased um, at all, not to the Muslims at all, but I ask this as a, as a very general question to the community, where are the men? Mm -hmm. I said, because if an individual comes to the door like that, I expect every able body on my musalla floor, in my masjid, of my men to get up and charge. That's right. SubhanAllah. Get up and charge. Allahu Akbar. That's will, it. Will we die in the process? That's the method. I, absolutely. That's the method. I told them, absolutely, some of us are going to die. I said, because you can best believe if I see somebody coming out the back, I'm jumping over heads. That's right. If somebody may say the imam should be, I'm <laughs> jumping over heads. <laughs> because I got my wife, I got my nah, family. alhamdulillah. And, and at the end of the day, y'all my family nah, too. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I said, so I can't understand, I couldn't understand how yeah. so many people, were, how many that there were so many casualties. Right. And then when I saw the video, mm. It further upset. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, nothing. No, no, no. No disrespect and, to the deceased. May Allah right. them for those and make the martyrs and accept Sahi, them. I mean, I mean, I mean. But, and no one ever knows until you're in that situation how you're going to respond. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. But I think that there was more that could have been done. Right. And the thing is, is just, just like you're saying, it's a mindset. It's a mindset, right? It, look, we. I saw the film from the very beginning. There's somebody that had the film that... That, that, that made it available to us where we we were like in the car with him we 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 moved with him from the point the point where he left mm -hmm. to all the way till he got to the masjid and we're you know because he's got the body cam on it and it's like we ride in the car with him and we're maneuvering with him where he's going in the driveway he's coming back out he's moving here he's parked he he's he's got all this time and you can see that he's very calm. There's, he's not nervous. He's very. He's and he's calculated. Like I said, he's composed and he's taking his time. He's going. He had it was it, nothing, nothing, quick about nothing it. Dis was disrupt. Nothing. There was no disruption. There's no obstacle. There's there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing hindering. It's almost as time stopped. And exactly. What, that's a, that's a very good point. And that's exactly what what it appears to be. And he had he had a line of of rifles. Or assault rifles in the car, inside the car, and then in, inside his trunk, right? And the thing about it is that, again, it's a mindset. And, the, and just like I said earlier, they felt that they were safe. You see, that's what disarmed them. The fact that, and, and it's no problem. We all want to move to areas where we can bring up our children safe and so forth. And it's no problem. You can move to those areas, but you never let your guard down. Absolutely. You never think that evil can't seek you, seek you out in these kind of in, in, in the areas. Like I said, it's not the place that make you safe; it's the people that make you safe. All right. So what happened was, being that they had that mindset, there was there was no need for security. There's no need to be security minded. I can walk the street. I've been walking the street for years. Nobody's bothering me. We don't have no gangs here. We don't have no you know no robberies, no murders. Everything is is the suburbs. exactly. Yeah. Every and so what happens. Which you, you, you know, that mechanism that exists within all of us, and we go through the Quran, we go through the Quran, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, always be prepared, make ready your steeds and your power and all that you can muster, you know, for warfare. If, uh, uh, the other ayat in, in Surah Al Anfal says, says that there is a unity, awliya, among the disbelievers, and if you Muslims fail to do it now, there will be much fitna. 
So we, so we understand what, what is that uh, uh, alliance that the disbelievers have? They, you know, they warfare. It's talking about the unity that they have in terms of warfare, in terms of fighting, in terms of they're organized and they're unified. And if we don't do the same thing, you know, there'll be much fitness as we witness. So what happens is um, when he came out, look, we, we watched everything. And there was nothing to disrupt this person from doing whatever he was doing. And he, he was in broad daylight. The, matter of fact, he came upon a, he passed by one in the, two. yes, one and they saw him, they looked and him. And the other one that was in the car because the car door was open. Yeah, exactly. And nobody, now you know if somebody did that in your neighborhood, you'd be right up on it. But why? Because you're focused. You know the possibility of these things happening and you're security conscious. You, you, you know, we, in, in this, there's, um, there's, there's a concept and terminology in security. I teach the security class for the state. You know, we had, they, in order to become a, a security, uh, in order to work in New York State as a security guard, a security professional, you have to take an eight hour class. I'm mandated by the state to give that class. I give that class, I, I have hundreds of uh, uh, clients that come through to take because you, that's part of the vetting system in in, this, in New York State. So they have to take the class first, and then and then the other process of be, uh, getting their license to work. So so I have to teach from from the uh, regulations and rules and, and the laws that the state have have basically constructed, mandated. Right. So in there, there's a concept. Uh, there's a there's a concept in the principle that says, uh, that, says uh, that security. In terms of achieving, you you know you're talking you're talking about deterrence and so forth. In order to ch achieve that, you have to detect, deter, and and, and report. Mm -hmm. Now, detection means strong observation, and in that observation, there's perception. You know, you have to be able to perceive a situation. I teach my students in the martial, in my in, in my style, my system in ninjutsu. You have to sense an attack. You know, you don't have to wait for an attack. You can read the body language. If somebody there's some there's if somebody touches you, you know there's a friendly touch, and you know when there's a hostile hostile touch. And you got to be able to respond to each one. You know, um, there's a concept that says that you have to adapt to the attack. You know, you have to understand you you have to understand what defense. Mm -hmm. Is necessary to fend off or fend off uh, an, an attack. So you have to be into it, but you have to be that conscious, that conscientious, or the condescend of, of these kind of situations. So that's a very important thing. And the, and the thing about it is that you have to be proactive. You know, I, I, I tell people all that, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm not a reactionary because I already got the, I don't wait for something to happen. A reactionary person is waiting for something to happen, then they respond, but it may be too late. But if, we, if, but, but if we're set up, just like, just like in the Quran, is, you know, and this is where I, I, I get my resources from. It says to be like a cemented wall, you know, to be solidified, to you know, let them see your strength. This is, my, this is what I get from Islam. Let them see your strength. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu you know, when they went around the Kaaba doing that the time and when, when they were struggling, they, they, he said, look, take your cloak, put up the right arm and, you know, go around. The, remember the prayer when, when, they, when they were watching the Prophet and they was watching the, the Muslim and they saw the prayer, you know, all that had an effect on it because that's a projection of, of strength, man. Yeah. And, and, and Islam is all about that. Let them see you strength. That's why we, 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 we dread the had the we dread that the the nabu or the prophecy that says you know that you know this this is when the prophet says, says there'll be a time when when the nations of the world will gather against you right like a, like a people feasting around a morsel of food you know when i looked at the when i looked at that hadith the explanation is that you know when you when people sit around and feast they just do anything with the food and the food cannot react and they just, you know, hit and rip, you know, rip and tie. So I looked at that, and then it says it's taking you why, you know, why, you know, will we be many? No, less. No, you'll be many, but you'll be like the foam in the, in the seas. You'll be wasted. You will have no, no substance. You know, no value, right? It's degrading. So, and then it went, you know, I looked at it and I said, you know, that there was time that. The, the Prophet was saying that the people, the disbelieving enemies of Islam, they feared the Muslim, but Allah will take that fear out of the, out of the disbelievers. And 
put wahin in that heart, what? Hubbud dunya wa kharatun nam. Right? No. So so when I looked at that, when I looked at that, I said, this is this is what's this plaguing us now, Imam. Is 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 that, you know, like you said, you you know, you you said it loud and clear. In a situation like that, you know, being that you're not security minded, so you don't have anything set up. Alhamdulillah, I teach active shooting. Right. And I and 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 let me tell you how I introduced I teach it. I had been teaching. But then when I seen all these shootings and and that in schools and synagogues and so forth. But I taught this before this happened. And but how how did I introduce it to my to to my my group? What I did was because I know they had no idea what to do if somebody came in shooting. So I have as a as a professional and a teacher, an instructor, I have all types of tools and apparatus that I use to, to aid me in, 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 teaching, in teaching my group. So I have, I have replicas, you know, uh, props of guns, you know, and so forth that have the same sound and everything. It's not, it doesn't shoot any bullets, it's not real, mm -hmm. but it has the same sound and effect of a real gun. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, when I, was gonna, when, I, uh, when I set up to teach that class, what I did was I told, I told one of my students, I said, look, I'm gonna give you this, this replica, this gun, mm. and you're gonna go come in from this door, I'm gonna come in from the other door, mm. and we're, let's see the response of, my, of, of the group, right? So we came in and he said, oh, you stinking Muslims, and we start firing, boom, boom, and everybody just froze, boom, boom, right? So what did I do? <laughs> what, what, what was my reaction? I said, look, I said, what we did was to put you on notice, but I said, you will never, after this, after what I did, you will never react like, yes. And that's, and, and that's the way you have to train people. That's the way the society trains their troops. They, you know, the, uh, the SWAT and all, and police and so forth. They always give them an understanding of what is the possibilities, what is the risk, and what is the response. And then when I taught them active shooting, you know, they, they understood it, you know? I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a scenario, that's fine. Saturday or Sunday after the shooting, I go out shopping with my family. Mm. So I'm with my wife, my daughter, mm. and my daughter's little cousin, who's female as well. Mm. And we're in Coles. Mm. So my daughter says, I'm going to go over to the women's section, and I had to go pick up a shirt mm. for a visual. It was Saturday because we was doing the visual on Sunday, so I'm going to pick up a shirt for the visual on Sunday. Mm. And as I'm looking at the shirts for my wife, all of the lights in Coles go off. Mm. <laughs> and my wife, she she panics. Mm. I told my wife, get behind me, mm. get Sumay on the phone, mm. and I start walking, try to see if we can find it. My mind, I'm already looking at the racks. I'm looking at what I need to pick up. Exactly. Grab, there you go, that, shit. Because I don't know what's going on. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, maybe this, maybe this is something else. But you're security you know minded, right, man. Right away, yes. I, I jumped into that. My wife, I'm like, stay right behind me. Don't move. Follow me. Stay right. with me. You know what I mean? Um, until I find my daughter. Got my daughter. Same thing. There Keep you go. Line. Right. Boom. Then the stores I stand, everybody get out. Even as I'm walking out, I don't know what I'm expecting. Exactly. Front, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know who's on the thing. You right. know what I mean? I'm walking out cautious as well. Look, let's get out of the store. Stay behind me. Let's, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and I think this is very important. Right, right, because it's a mode of operation. You know, you whenever situation uh, happens, I told my security, I said, whenever whatever goes on, you already know the course of action. You 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 write in. You go right into that mode. You don't have to collect your thoughts at that moment. Second nature. That's it. Instinct. That's why they said that, you know, uh, it, that's why they call it when you get in the situation and the cops said it's only a split second, uh, a split second motion that, or a split second situation because you, you, you know, you're thinking. It's not like you're not thinking, you're, but it's the amount of time. It's the it's the, the level of, of speed that you're thinking with, and that's reflex, and and that's and, and that's being instantaneous moves and so forth. But you have to be trained to do that, right? And you have to be conscious. See, for you, even if you're not trained, if you're formally trained, you're trained because the streets you, you come from. We that's what we did in the streets. You know, we 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 grew up in the hood. That's why I said, you know, people moving out to the rural areas, and I have no problems with that. There's no qualms with me with that but see i'm in the, i'm still in the hood man and 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 you know it's it's changing you know the the gentrification is changing every but the point is is that we we stayed we stayed and we we waited out man you know and it 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 made me more aware of my surroundings i don't care where i go i can go into rural areas but i'm still watching I, you know because what happens is 
Like evil, evil has uh, no particular color, man. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm watching everybody. I'm profiling. I'm not paranoid. Don't get me wrong. This I'm not like everything looking on the show, but I do, and I teach my what we what we call uh, perception, what we call sensing, so forth. And you know, like I teach my students. I said, look, I said um, every so often, if you're sitting on the train or you you know you're going somewhere, just turn around. You'll see somebody watching. That's how you develop your senses. There's times there's times I could be walking because of my my, my training. And I can sense somebody behind me. And sometimes it's a good thing because sometimes one time I, I sensed a dude behind me and, and he seemed like he was out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I, did, when I did that, that threw him off. I didn't know what he was capable of doing. I've seen, I've been in a situation where I've been, I was going in the house and this is at night and the, and, and, and the guy was coming right towards me, right. And I gave him the deal you know, and he went away. So, you know, sometimes projection. Helps you in the situation. Not, not in some cases, somebody overrides that, but you just be ready for it. But you were ready. You went. You went. Once you see things happen, and you say, "No, this is out of the ordinary. There's something going on. Let me let me collect my thoughts and let me get into a preventive mode." And that's what this is about: prevention. So the point is, is that even when the even now, I was one. I said, and, and, and you don't know what's in the minds of the people, but you know there's something. There's, there's something missing, you say. But because the, the, this, this uh, assailant came up on the steps and the brother greeted him. You didn't see, he had the, he had the right shotgun right there. He was holding it in his hand like this. And again, it comes to the mindset because that person, and I don't know what's in the person's mind, but I know what happens, could happen. And I say, Allah, but I'm just saying, is it possible that now you know that, you got a man with a gopro on his head all that it's, it's, right it's all these tell and you're that greeting tell right. you're greeting him, and there's no fault not, and, and, and believe me um uh we're not faulting anybody no, no, we're no. just we, this is a critique An analyzation and of, it, of the, of the right and and also would it, it it'll help us to like 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 the imam said you know, there's soft targets and hard targets. That person went after the soft target, so you have to harden your target. And that hardening the target, it, 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 it really it comes to many degrees, and one of it is, is it first comes in terms of your thinking, right? So the point is, is that when he went in, and then he started shooting, and see, this is what happens. See, in the hood, we we know gunfire. Some people might think it's firecrackers or whatever, but when we hear gunfire, you know, we, we know the, 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 the character of gunfire. And so we take, you know, I was in, in, in my house one time and I heard, uh, I heard gunfire. I was, you know, I was, uh, cause I, I live, you know, there's a two floor, but I was up there with my, my grandchildren and I heard the gunfire. First thing I did, what did I do? I told them, get away from the window. You understand what I'm saying? You know, you might want to come in. No, no, you get away from the window. How many, how many news reports we heard where a child gets shot because the bullet came through? The, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Right, straight. You understand? So, so, but that's the mode that I'm in. Yeah. By Allah's permission, alhamdulillah. That's the, you know, I don't, I, I'm, you know, it's like I know what kind of uh, course of action, what mode I got to be, what mode I got to get into when I, when I confronted by these situations. So this is, this is the training thoughts of a security. And that's why you got to train people, you know, to be uh, cognizant of, of, of what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. So this situation here shows us that that nobody's exempt and that we none of us are safe, but we, we have to prepare. We, you, we ha you have to expect these kind of situations. You can't think because you're in a certain place that these things can't happen. I'm pretty, quite sure those people in the, in the, uh, what it, uh, the um, I think, uh, the synagogue. The synagogue, they, again, they, they, nobody, it's n nothing like that ever happened, or no indication, no sign. Yeah, yeah. But the guy just came in there and started blowing people away, man. Yeah. And and uh, the people that, um, and and that's why you got to look at everything, man. Look at all these situations. Uh, the people that were at the concert in, in Las Vegas, and the guy goes to the hotel and he start picking people off. Nobody, you know, you you partying or whatever you're doing, that's not you don't expect for this to happen. And we can just cite. Situations after situations, and we can in in all of this is like what is the mindset of the people? So so what we do, you know, the brothers, we set it up. You harden your target. There's so many ways to harden the target, just to be aware. Because 
the masjid is, is structured different. There's not a lot of uh, barricades, you know, yeah, or barriers. It's open space. space. And if you notice in the, in the shooting, to the, the show you how, how very proficient this person was in respect to shooting, everybody he came in contact with, he picked them off. Everybody, and, he, and you see, the, he was moving like you see, it's called force entry. It's the way SWAT and the military ent enters buildings and so forth. So they, it's a line, it's a line move. And when he, and then see, he's, he's at a point when he doesn't have to turn the right, he turns, he, he see, boom, you know, he's, he, he's, he's that sharp in respect to, you know, sight or when he, when he gets a fixed target immediately, everybody come in contact. And to show you how vicious this person's mind was and, you know, um, that you know, they talked about a three-year-old Muslim child who was very playful, right? And this, and, and, and this just to show you what, what we dealing with. And just like uh, uh, Brother Yusuf, he's telling you the minds of these people, man, is that such that we're not, that's, that we're not human, you know? And that's why, you know, anytime in warfare, they, you know, they, they, what they do is, they, is the propaganda is to degrade the people that they're fighting. Don't worry, they're not, they're not even human. They, you know, in the back in the days, they call them Japs, you know, chinks, um, uh, gooks, you know. They give them these kind of names, these, these, these degrading names, yeah. because now in your mind, these, pe these people don't deserve to live. So you do that, when you do that, it trickles over to the men and the women and the children. You know, you see, you heard what he said. He wrote, or they said, the reason why he killed the child because he said that child possibly would grow up to be an enemy. You know, say, hey, you know, and that's and, and that's the, it's no different from when they carpet bomb places. They don't care who, you know, back in World War One and Two, or particularly in World War Two, they carpet bomb the area. They don't care if women, and children die. See, that's you know, but in in Islam. The prophet emphasized, he made sure, do not kill women or children or, or, or vegetation or trees. And, you know, I mean, you know, we, we still have... Prior see, to the Geneva, Geneva Convention. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. And that's because of the prophet, him, he knows the effect of warfare on you. And you can make you an, a beast. You're not a beast. You're still a human being, even in warfare. So, so the thing is, is that, you know, we got to prepare ourselves, right? It's no longer... Uh, a situation where, we, like they said, sit idly by and let the authorities handle it. Yes, the authorities handle Alhamdulillah, I have to, uh, I send my prompts out and, and make my door to the Prime Minister of New Zealand. The way she handled it is, that's true leadership. That's the way every leader, Muslim and non-Muslim, should handle any kind of situation like the, the, the sensitivity, the empathy that she had, the compassion that she had for those who were experienced this type of catastrophe. So the point is, is that we got to make ourselves ready mentally first. And then out of mentally, then we put certain measures in place. And there's many things that you can do to put measures in place. And, the, and one of it is that you have to, I don't care where you live at, you must have a security structure established in your mas masajid. It's because it's very important. You especially know, for Salat time. Especially for Salat time. Especially, that's, the, that's when we're most vulnerable. You know, we, we, have, we have security that takes turn. When the salah is made, we got, because we got two how floors. Do you, how do you guys do that? Explain it to them. Well, the, what we do, first of all, in the masjid, uh, there's a reception area. We have, we have two, two areas in which people come in. We have a front area and we have a back area. And, and in the front area, we have a reception area where there's a security at the desk, just like when you go into any housing or business uh, buildings, this office building, you, you got to come to the security desk. That's one of the posts. So that security can see everybody that's coming in. And he sees that person coming in before they even get inside the actual uh, masala area, right? And so he's watching as that's coming. That's how you do the first thing. And then any area, any blind, what you consider blind area, you have a security in that area as, as well. When the salah is made, you have two, two to three security person watching so there's the person at the reception desk you have a person watching on one side of the masjid and the other person watching on the other side of the masjid and downstairs and so forth and that's how you you know can you have to continue to do that um we've had incidents and alhamdulillah we were able to handle it sometimes i'm not there 
I can't be there all the time, but my security knows uh, what, what we call uh, their instructions. It's called post instructions. It's, it's called details. Detail is the, is, is the matter and the methods that, that, that you use to operate as a security. The venue is the masjid. We understand it. It's a, like I said, the structure is an open area. But my, 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 uh, when, when there's an active shooter, just like you said, Imam, when there's an active shooter, some of us have to confront that to get to, to confront that actor or engage that active shooter and allow him put up some kind of obstacle, some kind of the, uh, 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 some, some kind of force field, some protective field, meaning disruption. You got to disrupt. You can't let him have a clean shot. This guy had a clean. Nobody. And 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 the thing that got me is that. I'm pretty sure Allahu Alam, but I'm pretty sure somebody called the police. But that's what I'm saying, Sheikh. Like, like when he came in, he passed two individuals up. He shot the brother who said hello, brother, and he started going into the facility. What happened to the two brothers that were outside? That's what I'm talking about. Like, I, 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 like why wouldn't they be the first ones to call the cops? Because the guy seemed like he had more than enough time. I, he I think, he I, had. I, I, I didn't even. Count. I heard. I, I heard it was like were, 16 minutes. It was. It was. You know, the the usual response time for police should be. You know, maybe two, five, three, three, to, three to five minutes. minutes right? If you if that happened here in America, and it has. They were on the scene within matters of, of, of minutes. Because they have patrols in every second. Exactly, you know and they mean? respond. So I'm like, I, 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 and I understand once the brother started shoot, once the guy started shooting the brother, you know, what happened to the guy who was out in the street, the other guy who was in the car, I can't also. And, call, and listen. And not only that, but I, I, I don't know, you know what I mean, and maybe you could tell us, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's strategic or not. I know I got tire iron in the back of my car. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, right. I personally. I'm not talking yeah, about yeah, that. I got you. I got you. You know, there's stuff that you, you know, you got in the car. You know, what I mean, would it have been wise for the brother to try to come up behind him? Everything, him everything. Because I'm thinking, as he's shooting, there's noise. He's not. He can't really hear what's going on behind him. Exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. Like, I, 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 and yeah. then he walked down a, a long, thin hallway. Long, yeah. Boom. Right. Right. Yeah. Opened up wide. Right. That if I know, and I'm, and I'm, every match I've been into, there's chairs. You, 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 you're covering all the areas that I would cover right now. In other words, this is what I teach in active shooting and this is what active, this is what's taught in active shooting, that you start throwing anything you can at them. And, I, and, and we have chairs and that's what I showed my, um, my, my, my group. I, you know, like I said, sometimes you can hear the shots. So you, you know, the first thing you do when you hear the shots, you barricade yourself. You get by, if you can get behind a partition, a door, whatever, and you barricade. If it's more than one of you, everybody, you 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 start strategizing who's going to do what. And I said, I said that you like we had a scenario where the shooter was in one area, so we barricaded the door. If he, if the person comes in, you got one person on one side, one person on the other side, and had everybody taking cover. As soon as he steps through the door, everybody bombards him with the chairs, and then and then the other people come and and they engage them. Right. So there's all types of things. It's just exactly throw something out. The, you know, we got to say we had heroes in this yeah, situation absolutely, absolutely. with brother. Abdu, and I remember his name and I got his picture. Yes, Abdul Aziz and, and the imam, imam, I think is Imam Alabi, Alabi or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, heroes. Abdul Aziz did exactly what we were saying. And he's just a custodian, man. The, the second master. The second master. Yeah. He did exactly and, what and we're had, talking they, about. They, had less, they only had like about seven or eight deaths. That's right. He, by Allah, he was able to save lives. And, and, and what he did was, when he heard, he went, he engaged, he went towards, he went, he went rushing towards the guy. And, he, and, he, and what he did, he picked up an ATM machine the first time and he threw it at him, which causes the guy, I guess, he was, remember, he was dropping rifles and picking, and he had rifle stuff. He, and, the, and, and when he engaged, he hit the guy. The guy started to run. He picked up the rifle, he shot, but it was, it was, not, it was empty. And he threw it at the man's car, and the guy thought he was under fire. And you know, you had Alibi, he's also engaging him. So we did have heroes in this. And we, they did exactly what, they, what we would say. Is, is, is the course of action that you would take when you got an active shooter. You have to engage that person. You know, like you said, if it's written, you know, but, but the sacrifice is greater. It's greater, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's, and that's why. And that's what is amazing. Allah gave us lessons on both sides. Yeah, <laughs> subhanAllah. He so we, can, we he, went in both he, ways. He gave us the passive lesson with the measure we had the most lost, right. lives, unfortunately. Right. And then he gave us the more aggressive 
method where the brothers actually engaged and there was less loss of life. Sahih, Sahih. So, so you know, so that's you know that's that that's what it is. It's a lesson, man. But I, you know, like I was invited to the Majlis Shashur meeting myself, Imam Isa, and Yusuf. And, uh, you know, we, we gave a presentation. We, you know, they wanted to know what we can do. But I told them, look, you know, there was in other incidents that happened before. And, um, you know, they had me come, you know, there was a situation that happened in Queens where, where the oh, imam was, was, was uh, actually assassinated, I would say, and his wife in Queens. And uh, so, you know, they were, the community was concerned. We had a rally, this and that. And they called me in as security because I'm also myself and Imam Issa. We're, the, we're we're security for for the Majlis Shura in the metropolitan area in New York. So um, they called us in, and you know I did a whole survey. I went to the, I went to the masajids, I went to the madrasas, and I told them what to set up and you know how to set up, and never got the call back because everything died down in its business users. So my my not trying to be harsh or. Uh, or uh, uh, insensitive, but I told him, I said, we've been here. I said, I can't exhaust myself with this kind of stuff there. Where I come, you, you know, you, you, you're enthusiastic about from the beginning, and then when things die down, you go back to business as usual. We can't operate like this is not the time to operate under those bases because you can see what happens. I said, I'm always available. But I'm not going to overstretch myself when I see there's nobody Giving back, stretching. You understand what I'm saying? The, the Prophet is telling us that when he went into Medina, he always had people on the outskirts. Yes. Looking to see if there was people coming to Sahih. You know what I'm saying? He That's had right. People in the enemy's ranks, making sure that things wasn't going to happen to the Muslim, bringing back information, news. The Prophet said, was always prepared. Hey, we're, we're, I mean, this, this is the point that I was trying to make. Never caught sleeping. You know? Never. And we got we we have all the means. We have all the best. Oswan to Hassan. We got the best example of the Muslims. They never lost the battle after that. They never lost the battle, and it's written historically. Where uh, even in in, in um, West Point, you know, they study the Prophet's method of fighting. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You know his warfare. You know that's 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 it because, you know, quite naturally, it's it's it the the warfare and what the what, uh, what the Prophet Sallallahu gave us is, is divine, you know? And it's something that we need to understand. It's, 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 it's effective, it's workable. It will never lose its value, you know? And all we gotta do is, is take what we have and put it put into place. And, and, and what I, also what I, what my appeal to, to our imams and our leaders and our organizations, don't depend on the authority, yes, they have the, a role to play, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that we, the Muslims, the believers, are protectors of one another. You understand? Don't look to the enemies to be your protectors. And I'm not saying the government is the enemy, but I'm just saying that we have to look towards each other. There's professionals in our midst. The same people that you're looking at outside Islam out in terms of non-Muslims, we got stop plenty. Again. Stop. Let's, be, let's, let's keep it real. Alhamdulillah. Stop ignoring the brothers and sometimes sisters that you have in your community. Because Sheikh said, Sheikh Ali said he got sisters in this. I'm part of the security team. We go to Mecca, there's women on the security team at the house. Sahih. All right? Let's keep it real, inshallah. That, you know, we got believers from among us who, mashallah, have the ability, have the skill, have the knowledge, have the know how, can protect our communities. Stop skipping past them, hiring someone on the outskirts who is not from the community, who is not going to have the love, the compassion, and the dedication to protect you and the Muslim community like these brothers and sisters are going to do, inshallah ta'ala. Because, you know, we just, we just, that becomes the normal business of day for us that, you know, we think that, alhamdulillah, the non-Muslims are going to do it better than the Muslims. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the heart that the Muslim has for the belief. Alhamdulillah. They don't have the love for the, for the belief. You know what I'm saying? You may even find in certain, certain instances, <laughs> they may tuck, tell and run. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, these brothers and sisters are trained. You know what I mean? We need to use our resources appropriately. You know what I mean? I've been going, turning blue in the face saying this. You know what I mean? Let's stop the nonsense and start using these resources with the right way. Inshallah. Take Alhamdulillah. Take the conclusion. What do you, what, what do you, what's your last Well, my conclusion for? is, 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 is to say that um, uh, we're, I'm available, 
Uh, I've been called, you know, in, all, throughout the country and also o overseas, right? I just came from South Africa and I gave a presentation, a uh, martial art presentation and a security presentation. So I'm available. Uh, and I have and myself and, and, and my crew, uh, we're, we're available. And uh, uh, if you need to contact me, you know, Imam uh, Abu Sumaya, he has my number and I, you can go through him. And if, if you know, whatever I can do, because I'm about my people, I'm about the Muslims, you know, and I'm about hopefully benefited the Muslims and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and do so, inshallah. Amen. 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 So just in closing, inshallah ta'ala, anytime, you know, you heard anything on this show today talking about defending ourselves, that's our God-given right, that's our, mashallah, governmental right. Right. Alhamdulillah, that we can protect ourselves. That's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about harming people indiscriminately. We're not talking about uh, a backlash and outlash, a revenge. We don't, we're not people who practice revenge. Um, anytime we talked about training, we're talking about training to protect our Muslim community. Yeah. This isn't Al-Qaeda training. This isn't, you know what I mean? Terroristic. No, nah, we're not down like don't, that. Don't get us caught up in none of that nonsense talking about all the brothers are training and you know what I mean? All of a sudden you want to put us in a court case or something like this for some nonsense. We're talking about using our God-given and governmental right as everybody else to be able to train, to be able to be ready, to be prepared. And Muslims, wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This was a sign for us. It's a 74-page manifesto. That's right. 74 pages of what this sicko was thinking before and after on how to plot to kill you. And, and, and he said there's other individuals right. as well that he's calling upon to join him in that. And just to inject, some people say that this was written in America. This might have been written for, this was written in America. That's some of the you state. Never know. Allah knows best. He, you know, according to him, he wrote it two years ago, got caught up, he said, he tossed it out, rewrote it a few months ago again. Alana, Alana I know best. 74 pages. <laughs> this is a lot of thought. That's right. This, you know what I'm saying? This is just like a thesis. You know what I mean? Um, you know, how much longer, how many more things need to happen? How much, you know, how much more death do we have to... 41 uh -huh. from 50 is enough for me. I don't right. think there needs to be another one, another two, another five, Sahih. another six. 50 was enough of awakening. And, and I'm going to... And, and again, you know what I mean? For our Muslim community, I'm going to tell you what the imam... From that I heard online say we don't need cotton candy men, right? He said cotton candy is both sweet and soft. So he. We don't need cotton candy men that are sweet and soft. We need real men like we had at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm bringing my family to you. I expect my family is going to be safe in your That's community. Right. Just like when you come to my community, you expect that your family is going to be safe in my community. Inshallah Ta'ala. We have the professionals here. Inshallah Ta'ala. Jersey. Let's start inviting them out. Let's start having them come through. Show us what it is that we need to do to be prepared because if we don't get prepared then the outcome is only as we've saw it in New Zealand and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our brothers and sisters who lost their lives there and again nothing in this talk was a disrespect for them or a disrespect to their community we are analyzing the situation what could be done you know what I mean in a situation like this inshallah ta'ala we have the footage we can analyze it now and kind of see, okay, what was done right, what was done wrong, you know what I mean? And how can we prevent it in the future? So don't send me no emails. Don't <laughs> send me no inbox messages. Right. Man, what you talking about? No. You weren't there. I have the video. Right. We have the video. We have the specialists. We're analyzing to see what can be done in a scenario like this. If it were to occur again, how do we prevent it? You know what I mean? How brothers and sisters can make moves, inshallah, tell us to prevent death from occurring. And that's all it is, inshallah ta'ala. Love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. As-salamu alaykum wa